A quick shout out to Pastor Dean Odell, who was the first to expose many of these documents on June 10th, 2018. If you want to check out his website, you can go to www.deanodell.org. So let's go ahead and dive into these documents. Um, I'm here to share with you 44 different documents from the governments whereby they admit the earth is flat. Uh, documents from the CIA, USSR, U.S. Army, NASA, Federal Aviation Administration, the FFA, U.S. Navy, National Imagery and Mapping Agency, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and the U.S. Marine Corps, which includes state-owned universities such as UCLA, Penn State, and Shenyang Aerospace University. Government admits flat earth document number one, put out by the CIA, whereby it looks like they stole it from the USSR, and this document was created, appears to be sometime around March of 1957, and you'll notice that in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the title of the document, the author, if there is one cited, um, unless there's a ton of them, and I'm not going to list them all. And then you have the URL of this document, so if you want to go download it yourself, you're able to. And when I go through these documents themselves, you'll see on the bottom right-hand corner is the page number where you can find these, these phrases and words cited. So beginning with page 19 of 100 for this dissertation, there's the brightness of the firmament. The firmament is a biblical term which is, a, which is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 eight different times and beginning with verse 6. And the firmament is, is, uh, was made to divide and separate the waters from above from below, as well as the sun, moon, and stars are placed within the firmament. So uh, please go reread Genesis chapter 1. The firmament is also mentioned on page 20. Also, a near sun, which means localized sun, is mentioned. And um, it talks about the brightness of the first order and derived on the assumption of a flat earth and giving some conclusions derived on the basis of this formula. So the formula is based upon the assumption of a flat earth, there's a near sun, and there's a firmament, apparently. Government admits flat earth document number two, propagation of electromagnetic fields over flat earth. You'll notice that on page seven, it says flat idealized earth, on page 17, flat earth. Page 18, flat earth. Page 28, flat earth. Page 35, flat earth. Government admits flat earth, document number three, from the U.S. Army, titled An Energy Budget Model to Calculate the Low Atmosphere Profiles of Effective Sound Speed at Night. There's an image in the document where it shows a near and localized sun, corpuscular rays, and a flat earth. And uh, that again is on page 10. And then if you go to page 16, you see the word flat earth. Government admits flat earth document number four, put out by the United States Army, titled Computationally Efficient Algorithms for Estimating the Angle of Arrival of Helicopters Using Acoustic Arrays. Let's see what it has to say. On page 17, it says, Flat Earth. Page 30, Flat Earth Model. Page 31, Flat Earth. Page 35, A Flat Earth. Government admits Flat Earth, document number 5. This one is from United States Army, titled, Adding Liquid Payloads Effects to the 6DOF Trajectory of Spinning Projectiles. See what it has to say. On page 7, it says, assume a flat earth. These equations assume a flat earth. Government admits flat earth, document number 6. This is put out by the United States Army. In fact, it's the same author as document number 5, Gene R. Cooper. And, in fact, the title is almost eerily the same. Though what we'll find is that he didn't make any corrections for assuming a flat earth. But let's read the title. Trajectory prediction of spin-stabilized projectiles with a steady liquid payload. What does it say? Page 10. It says these equations assume a flat earth. 
why would you assume a flat earth if you're on a, a spinning ball? Government admits flat earth, document number seven, put out by NASA in August of 1988. Derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model. What does it have to say? Let's see here. Well, starting with page six, it says, this report details the development of the linear model of a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating earth. It goes on to say on this same page, by defining the initial conditions of the nominal trajectory for straight and level flight and setting the asymmetric aerodynamic and inertia terms to zero, one can easily obtain the more traditional linear models from the linear model derived in this report. On page 35, it says this report derives and defines a set of linearized system matrices for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. On page 55, it says based on assumptions of symmetric mass distributions, symmetric aerodynamics, and straight in level flight. And then on page 102, this report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat Earth document number eight, put out by NASA, titled General Equations of Motion for a Damaged Asymmetric Aircraft. And on page two, it states, in this paper, the rigid body equations of motion over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat Earth document number nine, put out by NASA, titled Predicted Performance of a Thrust-Enhanced SR-71 Aircraft with an External Payload. This was put out in June of 1997. And it states, non-rotating Earth. Right there, page 10. And this, this uh, SR-71 Blackbird has a top speed of 2,193 miles per hour. And it doesn't have to account for a rotation of the Earth, the Coriolis effect, the alleged Coriolis effect, or even the curvature of the Earth at 2,193 miles per hour. Certainly it would have to if it existed, unless it was flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat Earth document number 10 put out by the Federal Aviation Administration in conjunction with a company named MITRE. Its derivation of a point mass aircraft model used for fast time simulation. This is from April 2015. It says, assuming a flat, non-rotating Earth. Page 7. Government admits flat Earth document number 11 put out by NASA in conjunction with the University of Kansas. They contracted KU to do this work with, with them. And it was put out June of 1971. It is titled, A Method for Reducing the Sensitivity of Optimal Nonlinear Systems to Parameter Uncertainty. Let's see what it has to say. Page 14. It says, The idealizing assumptions made are the following. Number two is a flat, non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat Earth document number 12 put out by NASA it is titled, Calculation of Wind Compensation for Launching of Unguided Rockets. And on page 8 and 10, we have a diagram as well as it states, The missile position in space is computed relative to a flat, non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat Earth, document number 13, put out by NASA, December of 1987, titled User's Manual for Linear A Fortran Program to Derive Linear Aircraft Models. And it states on page 16, a rigid aircraft flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat Earth, document number 13 put out by NASA, December of 1987, titled User's Manual for Linear A Fortran program to derive linear aircraft models. And it states on page 16, a rigid aircraft flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat, non-rotating Earth. 
Government admits flat earth document number 14 put out by NASA in 1988. In fact, it looks like to be an updated version from the document number 13 that I just went over. Same authors and almost the same exact, if not same exact, title, which is User's Manual for Interactive Linear, a Fortran program to derive linear aircraft models. And it states on page 4, equations with stationary atmosphere and flat, non-rotating earth assumptions. Same thing as in document 13, same authors, basically same title. They didn't make any adjustment. Going on to page 126, it states the same thing, stationary atmosphere and flat, non-rotating earth assumptions. Doesn't look like they made a mistake with that documentation there. Government admits flat earth, document number 15, put out by NASA. This was put out in March of 1972, and it is titled Determination of Angles of Attack and side slip from radar data and a roll stabilized platform. What does it have to say? Well, page two, it states the method is limited, however, to application where a flat non-rotating earth may be assumed. If it's limited to that assumption and the earth is a spinning ball, then this document is garbage unless the earth is truly flat and non-rotating. Government admits flat earth document number 16 put up by NASA. It's titled U.S. Standard Atmosphere. What does it have to say? Well, on page 22, it says for the accuracy required in this document, it suffices to treat the surface as an ellipsoid who's flattening ellipticity. That means they had to flatten the globe. Why would you have to do that? For accuracy, maybe because the earth is flat. Government admits flat earth document number 17 put out by NASA in December of 1991 titled an aircraft model for the AIAA controls design challenge. And what does it have to say? On page 13 it states the flight dynamics of a rigid aircraft flying in a stationary atmosphere over a flat non-rotating earth. Government admits flat earth document number 18 put out by NASA. This was in December of 1978 titled investigation of aircraft landing in variable wind fields. And what does it have to say? On page 14, it states the aircraft trajectory model employed in this study was derived based on the following assumptions. A. The earth is flat and non-rotating. Government admits flat earth document number 19 put out by NASA titled a mathematical model of the CH-53 helicopter and it states on page 25 the helicopter equations of motion are given in body axes with respect to a flat non-rotating earth. Government admits flat earth document number 20 put out by NASA titled Development and Validation of a Piloted Simulation of a Helicopter and External Sling Load. Well, what does it have to say? Well, on page 6, it states a general set of nonlinear rigid body equations of motion for both the helicopter and external load determines the motion of each vehicle with respect to a flat, non-rotating Earth. It states on page 37, the equations of motion for both the helicopter and the external sling load are developed in body axes with respect to a flat, non-rotating Earth. On page 48, it states the terrain is generally flat. Government admits flat Earth document number 21, put out by NASA and the U.S. Air Force, in conjunction with research provided by Georgia Tech. And it, is, and it is titled, Atmospheric Oscillations. Well, on page 13, it states, A model frequently used is that of a flat, non-rotating Earth. Also states, the most one can profitably simplify the problem is to consider an isothermal atmosphere, plain level surfaces, and a non-rotating Earth. Government admits flat earth document number 22 put out by NASA titled Stability and Control Estimation Flight Test Results for the SR-71 Aircraft with Externally Mounted Experiments. And what does it have to say? Well, it states on page 18 and 19, if you put them together because there's a break in the paragraph, it states these equations assume a rigid vehicle and a flat, non-rotating earth. Not very safe for a vehicle that 
travels at a top speed of 2,193 miles per hour. Government admits Flat Earth, document number 23, put out by NASA in May of 1988, titled Flight Testing a VSTOL Aircraft to Identify a Full Envelope Aerodynamic Model. And it states, Motion over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Page 9 of 18. Government admits Flat Earth, document number 24, put out by NASA. It is titled, Singular Arc Time Optimal Climb Trajectory of Aircraft in a Two-Dimensional Wind Field. What does it have to say? It states on page 2, in our minimum time to climb problem, the aircraft is modeled as a point mass of the flight trajectory is strictly confined in a vertical plane on a non-rotating flat earth. Government admits flat earth, document number 25. This is put up by the United States Navy and it is titled Studies on Instabilities in Long Baseline Two-Way Satellite Time and Frequency Transfer, Including a Troposphere Delay Model. And what does it have to state? It states on uh, page two, it shows a graphic which shows two ground stations on equal level ground. Both ground stations on the same flat plane. And then on page 6, it states, assuming a flat earth and the straight line of sight. Line of sight, just so you know, line of sight uh, does not apparently exist when you're looking over the earth. And I'm going to get to that in another document pretty soon. Government admits flat earth, document number 26, United States Army. It is titled, Scale and Sensitive Detection Algorithm for FLIR Imagery. What does it have to state? It states that in other scenarios, only the range to the center of the field of view and depression's angle is known, so that a flat earth approximation provides the best estimate. That is page 6 of 22. Government admits flat earth document number 27 put out again by the United States Army, and it is titled User Manual for the Microsoft Window Edition of the Scanning Fast Field Program version 3.0. What does it have to say? Well, it says on page 45 of 47, this model works over a flat and non-turbulent atmosphere. Government admits flat earth document number 28 put out by the United States Army titled Path Loss Measurements in a Forested Environment at VHF. And what do we have to find in here? But it states on page 8, flat earth, page 16. Over a flat earth. Page 17. Over flat earth. Page 18. Over flat earth. Page 19. Over flat earth. Page 20. Based on flat earth. Theory. Not a theory. It's fact. <laughs> Page 23. Over flat earth. Page 25. Flat earth. Page 26. Flat earth. Page 35. Over flat earth. Over flat earth. Stated twice. Government admits flat earth, document number 29. This is the U.S. Air Force who contracted Brown University to put forth the document titled Review of Sound Propagation in the Lower Atmosphere, documented in May 1955. So what does it say on page 18? It says, in most of the topics to be discussed, the problem is to describe the sound field in a region of atmosphere above a flat earth. And then it goes on to cite, in page 208, cite a document, an article that was written in 1954 in Physica, um, XX, and it is titled The Extension of Summerfield's Formula for the Propagation of Radio Waves over a Flat Earth to Different Conductivities of the Soil. So you may want to research that one a little bit further. Government Admits Flat Earth, document number 30, put up by the United States Army, entitled Beacon Position and Altitude Navigation, aided by a magnet meter, and... It states on page 11, it says that the first is the Earth fixed coordinate system, which is fixed to the Earth with a flat Earth assumption. And just check out the diagram that they have associated with it. Are you serious? Government admits flat Earth document number 31 put up by the United States Army, and it is titled Automatic Target Acquisition of the Demo 
3 program, and it states on page 9, only the range to the center of the field of view and the depression angle is known so that a flat earth approximation provides the best estimate. Government admits flat earth document number 32 put up by the United States Army, and it is titled Modeling of Atmospheric Effects. Let's see what it's got to say. Well, on page 28, it states, this model works well over a flat earth and non-turbulent atmosphere. Government admits flat earth document number 33 put out by NASA in conjunction with an organization called Range Commanders Council Telemetry Group. The document is titled Telemetry Standards. This organization, Range Commanders Council, their mission is dedicated to serving the technical and operational needs of U.S. test training and operational ranges. The RCC provides a framework wherein common needs are identified and common solutions are sought, technical standards are established and disseminated, joint procurement opportunities are explored, technical and equipment exchanges are facilitated, advanced concepts and technical innovations are assessed, and potential applications are identified. Their vision is the Range Com uh, Commander's Council, RCC, will promote credible change to meet Department of Defense, DOD, test and training requirements while promoting the common good of its members and enhance, and enhance sharing and interoperability of infrastructure and resources. And so apparently they've got a lot more than just NASA who they serve. They, just, they serve the Department of Defense, the Air Force, the Navy, the Army. That's who's at least listed here. So back to the document, which is to telemetry standards, on page 172, it states, although the equations for the two-ray model can be rather daunting, in its simplest form, one uses flat earth trigonometry to compute the difference in path lengths between the direct and reflected signals. You don't use flat earth trigonometry if you're on a globe. Government admits flat earth document number 34 put out by NASA in conjunction with UCLA, that's right, the University of California. This was put out in 1993 and it is titled Approximate Optimal Guidance for the Advanced Launch System. And it states that the equations of motion for the zeroth order problem of flight in a vacuum over a flat earth are presented. That's page 32 of 164. And then on page 43 of 164, it states, in this section, the three-dimensional equations of motion are reduced for flight in a great circle plane, the XZ plane, over a flat, non-rotating Earth. And then further states below, it says, equations of motion representing flight in a vacuum over a flat Earth. Government admits flat Earth, document number 35, put out by NASA in October 1995, and it is titled Flight Simulation Software at NASA Dryden Flight Research Center. And it states on page 4, this structure, with both flat and oblate Earth versions, has successfully supported more than 50 different aircraft. Apparently it also has a flat Earth version, and in most cases, Flat Earth, six degree of freedom equations of motion are used. Why would that be unless <laughs> the Earth is flat? Government admits Flat Earth document number 36 put up by NASA and it is titled Simulator Aero Model Implementation. On page 10, it states, for the flat non-rotating Earth considered here. And why are we considering to build a software over a flat Earth to be used for trainings? when the Earth is a spinning ball. Maybe the Earth is flat. Government admits flat Earth, document number 37. This is Shenyang Aerospace University, which is uh, affiliated with, obviously, China. And um, the title is Design and Implementation of Flight Visual Simulation System. And on page three, it states, and I'm gonna read this entire thing because it's very important to understand. Mathematical modeling of flight simulation. The aircraft flight motion simulation, as an important part of FVSS, directly affects the reliability and authenticity of the system. Flight motion simulation of effect can be greatly improved by relative mathematical models of aircraft flight dynamics. In this paper, the FVSS is based on two assumptions. A. Flight area is the space above ground level, level, 
where the rotation of the Earth and the curvy motion of mass center of Earth are neglected, meaning they don't take it into an account at all for this flight simulation software. Why would they do that if the Earth is a spinning ball? Why would you create software to train people how to fly on flat, non-rotating Earth software? Why? Because the Earth is flat. Government admits flat Earth, document number 38. This is put up by Penn State, which is a public university, so state-owned. The, the title is A Discussion of Methods of Real-Time Airplane Flight Simulation. And what does it have to say about flight simulation? Well, on page 11, it states flat Earth coordinates. In many flight simulators, globe navigation is not important. In such cases, it is appropriate to model the Earth as a plane half space rather than an ob oblate spheroid. Then the simulator need not worry about how the local horizontal plane changes as the airplane flies around the Earth. Though we know from other documentation, all flight is straight and level. This simplifies the bookkeeping in the simulator considerably. The flat earth coordinate system is a Cartesian system. Flat earth model. Thank you, Penn State. Government admits flat earth, document number 39. And this is in conjunction with na the National Imagery and Mapping Agency as well as the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. And the document is titled The American Practical Navigator an epitome of navigation. This is the 1995 edition. All right, so what does it have to say? Well, it states, well, one is waterline. How can water have a line if it's always curving? Maybe because it's level. In any case, this assumes that the observer is at sea level. The Earth is flat between observer and object. There is no refraction in the object and its water line form a right angle. For most cases of practical significance, these assumptions produce no large errors, or rather, in fact, no errors at all. And that's found on page 351 of 714. And then we also find that they have curvature of surface at 0.8 foot per nautical mile, which does work out with what commonly is known as the uh, Earth curvature calculation for the statute mile. For the statute mile, it's 0.6666 um, six, six, six foot per statute mile for the curvature of the surface, but for nautical mile, it does work out to 0.8 foot per nautical mile for the curvature of the surface. So apparently they're using the same uh, spherical trigonometry that flat earthers are using to prove that the earth is not a globe. And that's found on page 355 of 714. And then this definition I think was very interesting. It's called backshore. The part of a beach which is usually dry being reached only by the highest tides and by extension a narrow strip of relatively flat coast bordering the sea. Flat coast page 573. And then we also have line of sight. Now this is a very interesting definition, line of sight, the straight line between two points which does not follow the curvature of the earth. The only way that this apparent definition works out would mean that you're only looking up in the sky, never looking straight out over the plane of the earth, because if you were, then you would be following the curvature of the Earth, thereby it's no longer the line of sight. But we commonly say, in my line of sight, I can see such and such when you're looking straight over the Earth. Apparently we've been using it incorrectly. Government admits flat Earth document number 40 put out by the United States Army in November of 1969, titled The Production of Firing Tables for Cannon Artillery, Ballistic Research Laboratories, in Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. And what does it state right off the get-go on page 10? MSL equals mean sea level. What does sea level mean? Well, sea level. It is the level of the sea's surface used in reckoning the height of geographical features such as hills and as a barometric standard. And then what is the defini definition of level? 
but a horizontal plane or line with respect to the distance above or below a given point, a position on a real or imaginary scale of amount, quantity, extent, or quality, having a flat or and even surface without slopes or bumps, at the same height as someone or something else, give a flat or even sur surface to, begin to fly horizontally after climbing or diving. That's the word level. That's what is attributed with the word for sea level, the phrase sea level, the word level is in there. Because water always seeks to find its level. And, okay, so now, interestingly, in this document, it does state on page 22 and 34, rotation of the earth. That phrase, rotation of the earth, is cited three times between pages 22 and 34. However, an equation based on a theory, particle theory, is not a proof for rotation of the earth. For each of the three variables for the rotation of the earth in the theoretical equation, the number zero can be plugged in without negatively impacting the entirety of the equation. Thus, it's just a variable that has no bearing within the equation. And here was an interesting graphic on page 110. Uh, it shows a horizontal range in meters. On the far right, the one is chopped off. Somehow that happened, but it's 12,000 meters. That represents 7.45 miles and would be representative of 37 foot drop if the Earth is a ball. But Earth curvature is not necessary for calculating ballistic artillery. They put it on a horizontal range. No curvature. Government admits flat earth. Document number 41 put out again by the United States Army, April 2016, titled Field Artillery Manual Cannon Gunnery. What do they have to say? Well, no rotation of the earth. That is standard conditions. No rotation of the earth. That's on page 175. However, it does state on page 192, theory of rotational effects. But we understand if we look at the word theory in the definition, it is a supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained. A hypothesis, thesis, conjecture, supposition, speculation, postulation, postulate, Proposition, premise, surmise, assumption, presumption, presupposition, notion, guess, hunch, feeling, suspicion. Do you understand that the, the idea of a theory in science, with, until it's been proven anyways, it is simply a form of mysticism even, potentially. So this idea that they want to throw in the rotational effects in this document has no bearing because they admit that it's just a theory. A supposition, a speculation, a postulation. It's not a fact. And this is interesting too. The M198 howitzer has a maximum range of 14 miles. That would be 157 feet of drop from the alleged Earth curvature that goes unaccounted for. Why? Why would you not account for the alleged drop if you're living on a ball? Because you don't have to. The Earth is flat. Government admits flat earth, document number 42, United States Army, put out in July of 2006, titled Field Artillery Gunnery. And I'm not going to go through all the document, but I'm going to summarize what is in here, and you can check it for yourself. Concepts not discussed or disclosed in the document, Coriolis, rotation of the earth, sphere, curvature, or even the motion of the earth. However, the concept that is discussed is azimuth. And azimuth proves that you have to be on a ground plane, flat, no curvature for an azimuth. Now this image was not in the document itself, but the concept itself is used throughout the document, proving that it's flat. Government admits flat earth, document number 43, and this time it's the United States Marine Corps. And it is titled TTP for the Field Artillery Cannon Gunnery. And what does it state? The same thing as the document number 42, which I just covered. The concepts that are not discussed in this document include Coriolis, rotation of the Earth, sphere, curvature, and motion of the Earth. However, azimuth is, is discussed. Again, the Earth is flat. 
Government admits flat earth document number 44 put up by the United States Marine Corps entitled Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures for the Field Artillery Manual Cannon Gunnery. What's interesting about this document is that it does go into great length of stating the words and phrase rotation of the earth and Coriolis. It says it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different times at least. However, it also states that the standard conditions by which it operates or expects to be operating is no rotation of the earth at all. So why is there this contradiction? So how do we reconcile the difference and apparent contradiction of whether or not rotation of the earth or Coriolis needs to be taken into account? Well, number one, other than the mention of the terms rotation of the earth and Coriolis, there is absolutely no instruction in the documentation for how to account for the rotation of the earth. So why is that? Number two, the rotation of the earth is a theory. And just as in the quote, equation cited in the U.S. Army document, report number 1371, entitled The Production of Firing Tables and for Cannon Artillery, which was document number 40, it allows for the variable of alleged rotation of the earth to be zero, leaving the entirety of the equation unaffected. And it is the same with this documentation produced by the United States Marine Corps. And if you're interested in looking at document number 40 again one more time, you can pause this. This is for your help and research a little bit more right here. Or you can just go to the document itself and check it for yourself. But I'm going to move on. Now, what is discussed in this document is azimuth. And we understand that only works on a ground level plane, flat, no curvature. So I rest my case. The earth is flat.